So in this video, I want to talk about learning and processing and taking in new information. I mean, basically, if you struggle with looking at my videos, learning something new, maybe you want to go out and approach women, maybe you want to go out and talk to new women, maybe you want to get more dates, but whenever you try to focus on growing that part of your life, it's a struggle, it's difficulty, it's challenge, it's work, it's hustle. So you force, 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 only to find yourself burn out, take a big break, start again, and you seem to be getting nowhere. Well, a lot of that is because of the power of intention. You, Your power of intention is off. Your ability to hold an intention is off. Now, I wanna talk about that today. I wanna to talk about how to develop a powerful intention that will cut through all this resistance and actually start to get rid of it and start to grow your life in the direction that you've chosen to grow it and what might be holding you back in this area. So uh, before we dive in, I wanna thank, uh, in my last video, um, the four things that make you irresistible to women, uh, somebody had this question, I thought about it, I thought this is a problem that probably a lot of you have, and it stops a lot of you from growing. Matter of fact, not only does it stop you from learning and growing, it actually stops you from having good conversations. If your intention is off in this area, if these two things, I'm gonna talk about these two things that are really important, if they're off, then you're gonna be stressed, worried, you're gonna be in the back of your mind thinking while talking to beautiful women, and you're just not gonna connect with them. So it has a huge effect in that area too. Now, we're about to get started, but before I get started, I wanna invite you to like, subscribe, share, and comment in the video. Um, I don't want you to miss any of the valuable content we got coming out. I'm bringing out more and more awesome content, and uh, that's uh, and I don't want you to miss any of it, so make sure, again, to like, subscribe, share, and uh, hit that bell notification too. Um, also, with that said, I got one more quick announcement. You guys all know I'm building another business called True Courage. Uh, TrueCourage.io is the, is, the, uh, is the website, and uh, we don't have any social media for it yet, but we will be launching social media around that business too. It's not dating-centric, it's success-centric, life-centric, enjoying life-centric, and uh, it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's a huge passion project for me. So if you wanna get more involved in that, you wanna know when the social media comes out, you wanna know have updates as to what we're doing, go to TrueCourage.io, .io, not .com, and sign up for the email list. Uh, we've only sent out one email so far, but we'll be sending out more in the next few weeks and setting up social media. So uh, with that said, let's dive in. Now, there's two main reasons that you could be having trouble in this area, that you could be uh, having trouble holding an intention. What the, the, the viewer who asked me this question said was he's trying to watch that video and he's getting distracted all the time. And he really wants to watch it, but his mind wanders and he has a hard time holding intention. And uh, I had the same problem for many years. My mind was constantly wandering. I couldn't hold an intention and uh, I couldn't focus. And really when I fixed these two things, um, that changed pretty radically. So we're gonna dive into those two things and talk about why that is. Now, when I had this problem, I'll admit that I thought I had it everywhere. But when I looked at my life, and I wanna invite you to do this really quick. When I looked at my life and looked at things that I loved doing, I didn't have that problem. There were certain things that I was really, really into, and I could go deep down a rabbit hole with those things and really learn a lot really fast. But everything I wanted to learn that was going to improve my life, make me more money, get me better with women, I couldn't hold a focus on. The other things I could, and there's a main reason for that. So this is gonna be problem number one, or challenge, I prefer to say challenge. So it's gonna be challenge number one that you need to get good at or understand so you can get good with your intention. And that is really simple. It's that if you don't enjoy the topic you're looking at, you, you have resistance to it, it causes you pain, we call it the pain pleasure principle in hypnosis, then your nervous system is going to start to wall off. It's gonna to start to uh, tighten and it's gonna be really hard to take the information in. Your, uh, your neocortex is gonna to start to uh, pull in, you're gonna go into the side brain, your mind's gonna to start to wander, your heart's gonna close off, you're not gonna get any emotional connection to the topic. And then trying to get the data in is gonna be like trying to get data in. It's not gonna have any emotional relationship. You see, information, not only does your, your intention expand with emotion, as you really love something and the pleasure side of the pain pleasure principle, not only do you get really into it, really begin to enjoy it, you begin to go in deep and you wanna go deeper and deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, it also allows you to uh, uh, remember faster because you're associating it with really good emotions, which allows the brain to do its associative process and start to remember. 
And so really good uh, learners are really good at associating what they're learning with pleasure. And I have a, th uh, a three within that within this process. Number one, I have three things I'm always asking myself when I'm learning something. Uh, and if I'm not, I recalibrate. And so this could be a topic that I have total resistance to. And I will still ask this. And this is a ha part of how I'll start to get past the resistance. Um, number one, do I love the idea? Do I have any love for it? Is there any sense of warmth or fuzziness here on a scale of one to 10? And I'm looking for around a seven. I don't want to, a, a 10 is great, but around a seven or better is really good. Think of it as a, you got a C on a report card. That's good enough. Like I can do it. I can start to work with that. You can build that seven up to an eight, nine or 10. This love can grow. Do I have turn on for it, which is different. That's going to come from lower in the body. There's a sense that, oh, fuck yeah, that's fucking sexy. Or up here, it's, oh, I appreciate that. So is there a sense of turn on for this thing that, that I'm willing and, and turn on it allows you to be willing to face tension to get better at it. And we're going to talk about what each one of these means in a second. And number three, do I believe I, this is huge, can do this? If you don't believe you can do this, but you have love and turn on, you're going to amp, you're going to create a lot of pain because the fact that I can't get women, but I have a love, turn on for women and I have love for women is going to cause this sense of separation from women, but they don't like me and it's gonna cause more and more pain. They're activating the pain pleasure principle again, caught the pain side of the pain pleasure principle that is, causing you more pain, causing you to want to uh, get away from it. Your nervous system's gonna to wanna to get away from it. Your body's gonna to wanna to get away from it. Eventually you'll find a way to do that, you'll burn out. So what do each of these mean? Number one, do I have love for it? Well, you can have love for art, but that doesn't make you wanna be an artist, right? So when you have love for art, you'll appreciate it. Yes, you'll learn about it. You develop things called like things like curiosity, uh, appreciation, gratitude. That's where that naturally comes from. It comes from that love. And it's like a warm, fuzzy feeling that goes on right here. And so I want to invite you into this idea right now to think about things you have love for, you have appreciation for, joy for, curiosity for, because that curiosity is going to bubble up. And, uh, and start to ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how much do I love this thing that, I, that I'm involved in? Okay, that's number one. And if it's below a seven, there might be a reason for that. You might need to change the way you look at it or change the way you play with it. If you have love for the idea of going out and meeting women, approaching women, but when you start to think about, uh, when you start to think about it, 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 it's like a five or a four, you wanna get that up to a seven. So maybe you just need to have love for the idea of approaching in general. Like maybe not you doing it, but watching other people do it online. Maybe you need to have love for the idea of, of, uh, of learning about all the techniques to approaching women, building that love in your mindset. The goal here would be to build that love up, to work, to expand it so that it's strong enough to stand the test of time when you go out and take action. Because if you take action while the number's too low, it's going to cause pain. Number two, do I have turn on? Just because I have love for something doesn't mean I wanna take action. Let's go back to the painter. Just because, uh, not the painter, but the person who loves painting. Because he loves paintings doesn't mean he wants to be a painter. He might just be an artificial, an auto, loving art, but never seeing himself as doing it because he doesn't want to take the effort. He doesn't want to get the canvases and study and learn. He just rather appreciate. And that's very common in this world. We love watching football. We love watching MMA. Do we want to put the work in to become an MMA fighter or a football player? Not necessarily. Maybe on a lower scale. So you got to figure out where your scale is. Everything is about progression. So if you have love for approaching women, meeting women, but you don't have turn on, you probably won't take action. So how could you get turned on for this? The turn on comes from the hips. It comes from low in the body. There's a sense of a, a sexual turn on almost like a mild sexual turn. It's not sexual. It just comes from that area. There's a passion. So feel your hips and start looking around for things that you can't to understand this better that you can't not take action on things you love to do in your life. Take physical action. Maybe you love to play basketball and you're turned on for it. And you feel that part. It's coming from underneath you lower in the body. And there's a sense I got to get out there and play today. For me, it's skiing. There are days when I've got to get up and ski no matter how tired I am. The mountain's about 30 minutes from me. I'm in the car. I'm out there and I don't care how tired I am. I'm happy inside. I'm turned on for the idea of when I hit that slope in the morning and I know it's going to feel great. Even a bad day of skiing for me is still fucking awesome. It's sexy. It's, it's beautiful. And I feel that turn on. So that's how I can understand the turn on better. If you don't have that turn on for meeting, dating, learning, approaching women, 
you have to develop that turn on. You have to shrink down the amount of information you're taking in to a level you can you could find turn on for. And then you want to quit with the turn on still on. It's like I study for five minutes. I stop studying in the when the turn on's high so that I'll want to get back to it later. Don't burn yourself out pushing yourself. I'll do that skiing. I'll go out for an hour sometimes when I and if I and maybe I go out for two, maybe I go out for all day. It depends on the day and the week. But I I I almost always leave the mountain thinking damn i can't wait to get out there again that was hot and that's that's where you want to end your sessions leaving feeling complete but feeling like i can't wait to do that again so you got love and you got turn on you got well, in other words appreciation gratitude joy you got turn on you got uh, passion passion's another word for turn on you got uh, drive uh, decisiveness um um choice like there's a power there's a cutting energy in the turn on so both of those need to be at a seven on a scale of one to ten and then the third thing you want is you want to have um uh, a belief we talked about that earlier do you believe you can do it if you don't believe you can do this thing like i brian women would like me and so therefore i am capable of doing it all the other numbers are going to be lower and this is the one that could cause both the other numbers to crash you could have love for the idea of approaching women you could have a uh, passion for the idea of approaching when you step out there it crashes because you don't believe in yourself so this needs to be at a seven too and then you can slowly push that up if it's not at a seven you don't have belief in yourself then what do you have belief in do you need to go out and get a dating coach that can do it and so you can change your reality you need to have that belief challenge maybe somebody that stands there with you and does it in front of you a little bit and then and then uh and then you go wow that really did work i didn't think that would work and that starts to change your belief you need to watch videos of guys doing this stuff men doing this stuff like anthony fearless anthony um who's a dating coach that, that worked for me uh, that has his own channel now and uh, he's a good example watching him do it is is awesome because he loves to go out and approach women he gets turned on by it. he gets sexually turned on at the idea of approaching think about that for a minute um, because his belief is so strong he expects women to like him do you need to hang around guys that have this reality or men that have this reality make friends with them that don't understand why women wouldn't like you and you're a man women get turned on by men of course they like you women like sex women like well being out with guys really solid dudes and so building that belief could be huge starting with just the idea i always say start with the idea learn about it get turned on for the idea and then it'll naturally grow into something that's bigger than an idea something you eventually want to take action on and that's huge too. Like for me, um, moving to, to Montana, where I live in the mountains skiing all the time, I thought about that for a long time, actually for years in the background of my mind. And then one day I just started taking action. I, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even plan it. I just, I bought a house in two days. I was moving here. I've been, I bought season passes and it all just manifested super fast because I enjoyed the idea of it for so long. I had this image of this house with mountain views. And now I own two properties out here. I'm about to buy a third and I'm, I'm having a blast. Best time of my life. So that's another great example. Now, so when you get those three things worked out, you'll start to grow your intention in any given area. If you want to learn about women and you think you're not good enough to meet women, every time you try to learn about women, you're going to be beating yourself up and therefore you're going to want to quit. And so that intention, that desire, that burning desire starts to grow as you build these three areas up. Now, number two in the in the in the two topics. So that was one. And that was three, three things in the subcategory. Number two um, is you have to focus when you're working on these areas, these three areas and the overall focus that you're developing, you have to focus on growth, focus on expansion, focus on what you're learning and celebrating it all the time. So let's say you just spent 10 minutes studying something that I teach, uh, like one of my videos on success orientation, which is literally what I'm talking about now, or one of my videos on how to say hi to women with your heart open, and it felt really good. Well, you want to celebrate that. Write that down in a journal. Say, yeah, I learned X, Y, and Z. Don't focus on, what I'm saying here is don't focus on what's wrong. Don't focus on what you're not learning, what you're not getting right. Don't focus on how you're beating yourself up, how you're stupid. Focus on what you learned, how you grew, even if it's only a little bit. 1% can compound very fast into a huge change in 30 days, 60 days. If you stay consistent, 
But if every time you focus on growth and you start to say, what did I learn from this? How did I grow? And you beat yourself up. You say, well, I didn't do this well. I didn't do that well. This was hard. I'm going to have to work really hard at this. That's what your mind, your subconscious mind here is wants to give you more of. It wants to give you more uh, hurdles to hurdle, more mountains to climb. But if you're constantly teaching your mind about success, like I can do it. Oh yeah, I got this. Um, okay, I see how I screwed that up. That's awesome because if I see how I screwed that up, then I can do X, Y, and Z and it'll work better. That's really cool. Do you see the mindset difference there versus I see how I screwed that up um, and uh, I'll never get it right. That's the other attitude. So this attitude of every challenge I look at, every problem I look at is an opportunity for for growth, for expansion, and it's exciting. And you're never gonna run out of challenges. So every challenge just leads to more growth and every bit of growth leads to uh, more growth, which then leads to more challenges because you're getting bigger and that's exciting because now I got a challenge at a bigger level and then I'm gonna work that out. True courage is filled with challenges that I'm having to hurdle, uh, aspects of the business I didn't learn before. And each one of them gets me more excited, more turned on. It's because we solve the problem and a solution shows up, I feel better. I feel like amazing. And I keep finding more solutions because I know they're there. By law of polarity, wherever there's a challenge, there has to be a solution. So I get excited when I run into challenges because challenges also equal money, they equal success, they equal, they equal uh, on a financial level where you can really see it. If you see a problems and challenges and you solve them, that's how you make money. If there's no problems and challenges, there's no money to be made. So. In dating, it's the same thing. Wherever you have challenges with women, as you solve them, you get more successful women. It means more women in your life. You gotta change the way you look at it. It's called success orientation. Look at the world through this through this success oriented mindset and journal them. Journal them every day and then read them right before you go to bed. Read all your successes for the day, even if they're only 1% right before you go to bed. So you take them into your dreams and your mind goes, oh, he wants more successes. And you're gonna start dreaming about successes. You're gonna start dreaming about possibilities. You're going to start dreaming about having those beautiful women on your arms. And then eventually it will manifest. Um, so that's how I work on focus. Those two basic concepts uh, must enjoy and the, and having the sevens. I call it having the sevens, like being in Vegas and um, and then focusing on growth or what I often refer to as success orientation. And when I've got those two things nailed, when they start to become become unconscious competence. At first, you're gonna have to work at it, but when they start to become unconscious competence, watch how your life grows. For these two ideas, it's very easy to take them down, write a couple quick notes about them, say, I'm gonna do these, but then never do anything with them. And um, that's unfortunate uh, because a week later, three days later, it's very easy to go back to your old program. Your old programming wants to pull you. So I tell people, uh, when they study this, you have to go back and study it every day for at least 30 days, preferably three months, because this can have that much of an impact. This could turn you from poor to a millionaire, from sick to super healthy. This can be one of the most powerful things you ever learn. So you could even watch this video over every day for a week and then watch it every couple of days and, and just keep learning. And um, I probably have also have another video called Success Orientation on YouTube somewhere and you could look that up if there is um, and study that too. Now, with that said, hopefully you're really enjoying this video. The whole new company, True Courage, is gonna be based on principles like this, how to create happiness, success, and propel you into the most powerful version of yourself possible. How to wake up every morning ready to seize the day, like my, my buddy Mark Iron said is that you should be waking up uh, almost every morning ready to seize the day. And if you're not, then something's wrong. If you should only have one or two days off a month is what he says. And that's super true. So true courage is going to be about seizing the day, about having a healthy body, healthy mind, and about really enjoying life. And uh, and when you live in CAP, it's amazing how much success comes to you. CAP, courage, acceptance, love, peace. And we're gonna be teaching you how to truly access the courage, which then takes you into appreciation, joy, love, and allows you to live from that space. Now, with that said, I have a lot of private clients who are now starting to live from this space 70, 80% of the time. Watching their constant successes one after another is awesome. So in True Courage, I'm going to start bringing those clients on so they can start talking about their successes and show you where they came from, where they're at now, and how much they've grown. So definitely check out TrueCourage.io. Um, if you want to learn more about that, that's, that stuff will be launching in the future. Um, if you uh, haven't watched it already, watch the video that inspired this. Um, four things that make you irresistible to women. It's a, it's a video where I break down these basic concepts that if you learn them really well, you'll become way more attractive to women. Yes, you're not going to get every woman in the world, 
but you can become super attractive and get a lot of women. And that's all that matters. You're gonna get the women that are right for you, that you polarize perfectly, and um, and that you love and enjoy. Because honestly, I don't wanna date every woman. Um, so with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure again to like, subscribe, share, make sure to comment, hit that bell notification. I'm gonna be checking out these comments. You know, I check them out all the time uh, as I bring you more content. And uh, remember, only the courageous really live. Take care. Have a beautiful day.